reading is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, and we're looking together at the verses from verse 5 through to verse 36. And in these verses, Jesus is looking forward. He's actually looking very far forward. Sometimes when in the immediate days or the immediate weeks we face something that's very challenging, something that's likely to be very, very difficult, it's necessary that we keep the end in view. Necessary that we keep the end in view. The days ahead may feel overwhelming, uncertainty, pain, fear, but on those occasions, and on occasions like that, and on so many different occasions, it's so right that we keep the end in view. Healing, health, returning home to family and to loved ones, recovery, uh, the good things that God has for us in the days that lie ahead, the things in life that we treasure. There are seasons in life where we really need to focus on those things and think about those things. As Jesus faces the cross, and what it means for him to take upon himself the awfulness of the sins of the whole world and the sins of every generation. As he looks at, at, at the darkness that lies ahead, he also looks beyond that darkness. He looks away beyond that darkness. He looks, for example, to how empty religion like the religion of the Jerusalem temple and what it had become would be replaced with all people everywhere, being able to know God personally, being able to worship God intimately. He points forward to that time beyond his death, beyond his resurrection, beyond his ascension, beyond Pentecost, and beyond this era in which you and I are living, to that time when he will return as the judge of the living and the dead. That day when he will come to earth again, next time, with power and with great glory. We read in verse 27, and they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So as he approaches the cross, he looks away, way beyond the cross, away, way beyond the resurrection, and away beyond the ascension, and away beyond Pentecost to the end of the age when he will return. And while you and I await his coming, while you and I await his promised return, we can be assured that he will return, that he will come again because he keeps every promise. He is the promise keeper. And yes, for you and for me, there will be seasons of challenge. There will be days that are really, really difficult. For the church, in many parts of the world, there will be times of persecution. There will be difficult days for, for all of us. But rather than getting caught up in the speculation of what day or month or year Jesus might return again, let's simply be a church that's watchful, that's prayerful, and above all, let's be a church that's also a church that witnesses to the reality of the cross and the empty tomb, and that he will come again, and that he will return to judge the living and the dead. In verse 36 of chapter 21, we're told, stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Earlier in verses 12 and 13, before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogue and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity 
to bear witness. Let's be a church that is bearing witness to who Jesus is and to what Jesus has done. Let's be individual women and men who bear witness to what Jesus Christ has done in us and done for us. Let's be those who can sum it all up as the hymn writer did when he said, it is well with my soul. And indeed, the Apostle Paul expressed it so powerfully when he said, I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So whatever our circumstances, may we be a people of hope, a people who are filled with the joy of the Lord, expectant for his return, able to say and to sing, it is well with my soul, trusting in all that he has already done for us through the cross and through the empty tomb and living a life of witness, bearing witness to Jesus and for Jesus in today's world. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you sent your Son to redeem the world and will send him again to be our judge. Give us grace so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And wherever you are today, whatever your circumstances, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and all peace in believing, so that by the power and the help of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. So Lord, I pray that you would impart hope into lives, Lord, where there's fear. Impart hope, Lord God, into lives that face uncertainty in the days that lie ahead. Impart hope, Lord God, into the lives of those who face big, big challenges in the days to come. Fill us with hope. And Lord, fill your whole church with hope that, Lord, we would be those who believe that you are able to do far more abundantly beyond what we ask or think or imagine. Lord, fill us with hope to see new generations won for Christ, to see communities transformed by Christ, to see lives won for Christ, and to see your church blessed to give glory to Christ. So make us a people of hope, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.